This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the UmiDigi Z2 Android smartphone. Not the best name, I know, but this is the perfect follow-up to the Samsung Galaxy Note 9 we just reviewed. For those of you who want a big screen phone, and you want some of the nice creature comforts, like a nice you know, wide screen, high resolution display, a reasonably fast CPU, dual cameras on, this has it all, 36 LTE bands. So yes, that means AT&T and T-Mobile for you US people has most of their bands covered enough to get decent service. So all of that stuff, right? And you're thinking already, well, gee, you know, OnePlus, OnePlus 6, for example, if I want to save some money and not go all the way to Note 9 kind of pricing, well, you know, OnePlus 1 started like this too. They had a lot of great features considering a really low price tag. This one goes for about $239 on sites like Gearbest. So this is not your grandpa's unlike unlock Chinese Android phone. This one actually has a really good look, good build, glass and aluminum frame. Pretty exciting actually. We're going to look at it now. So unlocked import Android phones from China have really gotten a lot better. This is not what you would expect for $239. Definitely it's a, got a premium look and feel and build. You've got glass and you've got aluminum here. It's slim, it's light, but not so light feeling that it's cheap or anything like that. Well done. It kind of reminds me of the early days of OnePlus, back when their prices were rock bottom low, but you got a lot for your money. So it's promising for what UmiDigi is going to do here. They're really trying to take it up a notch. Their website's been revamped. It's, it's good looking stuff here. Literally, import phones are taking it up a notch. This phone does have a notch, folks. So if you don't like notches, well, that's not going to be cool for you. Likewise, if you're on a CDMA carrier, that means Verizon or Sprint, this won't work for you. This is an unlocked GSM phone. One of the selling points, though, if you are on a GSM network, it says 36 4G LTE bands. This means it's going to work on pretty much every carrier, including AT&T and T-Mobile covers most of AT&T and T-Mobile's bands, except for some of their latest editions, but generally speaking what that means is it will work just fine most places that you go, since these overlay and more recent bands are just there to enhance and add some additional coverage in areas. I put all of the LTE bands down in the description so you can look it up and compare it to your carrier so you can figure out how well it's going to work for you. For those of you who want something even higher and then, than this, there is the Z2 Pro with a faster Helio P30 CPU and 128 gigs of storage, which doubles the amount of storage we have here. That's 299. There's even a ceramic edition as well if you if you want a really chic kind of look. Those are also sold on Gearbest. So what is this phone? It's a 6.2 inch widescreen full HD plus display phone with a 2246 by 1080 resolution. Kind of oddball, but that's because it's a 19 by 9 aspect ratio. Again, a little strange, but we're seeing manufacturers play with aspect ratios here now that they've gone to widescreen land. It is a nice looking IPS display, certainly, and it's bright enough to see outdoors. Dual SIM, 4G LTE for both SIM slots. And it's one of those where the carrier combines, you got two SIM slots, or the second SIM slot can be your micro SD card slot. So, you get the idea. You can have one SIM and one micro SD card or two SIMs, but you can't have two SIMs and a micro SD card all at once. There is no headphone jack here. It has USB-C, which is always welcome, and a USB-C to 3.5 millimeter headphone adapter is in the box. Also in the box is a TPU case. It has a factory applied screen protector that's actually pretty decent, a USB-C cable, and a fast charger. This is Android Oreo. No overlays, no heavy customizations like we often see in budget phones, which is good because it keeps the speed up. It has a MediaTek Helio P23 octa-core processor inside with Mali G71 MP2 graphics. So that's pretty mid-range. It's about the same as a Snapdragon 625 in terms of performance. So no complaints there given the price. And the phone always feels snappy and responsive. The animations look good. So that lightweight Android build certainly helps there. For the price, I'm pretty surprised. You get two forms of biometric authentication. There's the usual fingerprint scanner on the back, which works fine. It's a fairly ergonomically located as rear fingerprint scanners go. And it's smart enough to tell you if you're a little too high or a little too low with your finger. It's gonna, it'll actually tell you that so you can adjust your finger and get the thing to work. It also has facial recognition, which is very fast, but they'll remind you that this is not very secure. If somebody looks like you, they might be able to unlock your phone. You decide how unique you look and how important your data is as to whether you want to use that feature or not.
It supports fast charging, and it can go from 5% to full in about 80 minutes, which is indeed fast charging. Now, at this price, you're not going to get some of those higher-end creature comforts like wireless charging. It's not IP68 water-resistant either, and there's no NFC. So if you're really into Google Pay, then you'll probably be bummed by no NFC. Otherwise, you probably won't care. It has a 3850 milliamp battery. That's almost as much as the Note 9's 4000 milliamp battery. Now, MediaTek CPUs aren't quite as power efficient as Snapdragon's, but this one has done pretty well. And given the fact that it has a fairly large display and a mid-range CPU on this, it's pretty much a moderate use all-day phone. If you're going to go out and play Pokemon Go, does anybody do that? You know, hit the GPS hard, hit your data connection hard, it'll be shorter. But you get the idea. About five hours of screen on time, which is decent enough. It's pretty good. It has a mono bottom firing speaker. It's actually surprisingly loud. It doesn't distort too much. A little bit of bass you've got there. You know, it's not going to rock your world, literally, but it's decent enough. There's no mention of any kind of ruggedization here, and for the price, I guess I wouldn't expect it either in the Gorilla Glass or anything like that. So be happy there's a TPU case in the box to keep it safe in case you drop it. And the thing is almost all screen. It has a 90% screen to body ratio. Interestingly, we don't just have dual rear cameras, which are 16 megapixel Samsung sensors. We have two front 8 megapixel cameras using Sony sensors. So the secondary cameras are primarily there to do the focus bokeh, blurred background effects. But you know what? Let me tell you, here it's a little bit budget in terms of that feature because what it looks like it's doing is doing a vignetting. That means on the outer area of your photo, it's just blurring that with like a Gaussian blur or something like that. Something that looks like it could be done in software, honestly, without the second lens. So there is a slider to adjust the amount of it. And I did two selfies, so you can see two levels of bokeh. One's about halfway, one's about two-thirds of the way. And it doesn't intelligently blur. It's not like it's doing something like a high-end Samsung or iPhone would do. It's not looking at the subject and making sure that the subject is not blurred at all. It just indiscriminately blurs based on a radius starting from the sharpest center of the picture or the center wherever you tap to tell it is the subject. So Eh, not so good. The good news is, other than that, the camera software is pretty decent. Swipe to the left to get to your different modes, swipe to the right to get to your settings, and it takes very nice photos. Not super world enhancing, oh my god, you know, not even as good as a OnePlus 6, but they're competent photos. It does have problems with whiting out things, highlights and pictures, and that's my biggest complaint with it. With the video shooting, it can do 1080p. There's no 4K shooting here. And there's no optical image stabilization, which I wouldn't expect at this price. So you're going to see if you're walking around and you're bouncing while you're videoing, you're going to, you know, have a shaky looking video. But if you keep if you use a little care and go smoothly, like I did when I shot our sample video, it, it's decent enough. Now, in terms of software updates, I really don't know what their track record is going to be for this phone. It looks like they're trying hard to really push and please the enthusiasts, so I do hope that we see some updates. The security update on this was as of May 2018, and it is now August, so they're a couple of months behind on the security updates, but I'm talking... I'm sure you'll get security updates in the future. I'm talking the more major ones, like, say, to 9.0 Android Pie. I'm hoping, but I don't know. And when you're spending very little on the phone, this is one of the things that you might not get. So that's a Lumi Digi Z2, undeniably the prettiest phone in this price range. I can't stop playing with it because of that prismatic effect. But, you know, there's more to life than good looks, isn't there? And this thing feels quite responsive and fast. It runs pretty clean Android 8.1 Oreo out of the box, so no heavy overlays. Schwing there. The cameras on are pretty decent on it. You know, the bokeh effect, like I said, not the best that I've seen. But all in all, it just really ticks a lot of boxes. And it's got 4G LTE. That's going to work in most countries unlike older import phones from China, which often were pretty restrictive in terms of band support. Good times. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool phone videos, laptop videos, tablet videos. You get the idea. Thumbs up if you like this vid.